Hello and welcome to the Car Clinic of Podaholics podcast recorded at the Rove Hotel downtown Dubai. Man, everyone drives cars, everyone sat in a car, everyone looks at cars. I know, I know, you don't want to admit it, but you do. Well, Glenn and I are going to be talking about new cars, old cars, and things you need to do, such as change the oil and why on the car that you might own. It's important. We're going to bring you up to date. We're going to educate you. We're going to entertain you. It all happens right here on the Car Clinic. Let's get to it right now. The life of automobiles. And that's why we do this show, the Car Clinic with Glenn Power, Sandance Tire, and as I like to say, more than just tires. Well, just just anything. If you've got a problem, just make it my problem. That's that's how I... I, That that should be on my... I'd like that on the signboard. If your car has a problem, make it my problem, because that's how people treat me lately. But you know what? I like that idea. My problem is your problem. Yeah, everyone's problem is my problem. (laughs) Sick of it. (laughs) Except that's what you trade in. You want people's problems. Problems until yeah. you lose and sleep over it, which you do. Yeah, lose sleep. Yeah, and and just a shout out to whoever it is who's decided to reverse or drive forwards or oh. take the corner, cut the corner across the back of the van that I'm driving in, and just oh. total the door. Oh, nice. So that did was they great. leave a did they leave a sticker on it and say, "Hey, yeah. sorry." No, no. I, I mean, the height of it, I'm guessing it's a it's a truck. It's oh. like a. Yeah, uh, Arctic or something. It's probably not even felt that it's done it. Oh, man. Lovely. You know, and that, that just bugs me. And it's happened to me more than once. In fact, I, the, when I had my brand new Dihatsu Syrian, the thing nice. was not even two days old. I'm in the mall parking lot. I come out and someone has taken off the back quarter panel. And it, it had to have been, you know, a Land Cruiser or something just because it was white and it was high. Yeah, and I was like, come yeah. on, guys. Yeah, cheers. It's, it was brand new. Thanks. I, I cried. Yeah. I legitimately cried. <laughs> it was, you know. Yeah. I mean, got it fixed and all that, but it was brand new. Uh, it's yeah. ridiculous. I think I think that should be the lesson to everyone. Is like, look, you know what? Leave a note on it because the the bad side of this is if I if you then are in a, a parking garage where they've got traffic marshals or cameras, which is pretty much every parking garage yeah. now, and you go to the security and you can give them the, the the window of time that you were parked there, they can run back the traffic camera yeah. to see who did it. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know when it happened to me. Yeah. I just, I just literally went into the back of the van and I was like, oh, "What?" So it could have been. I haven't been in the back of the van all week, so it could have been any day this week, yeah. you know, last week. Yeah. Uh, inspect your vehicles. Yeah. Ah, well, a nice way to start the day as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Daihatsu series. No, that brings back some memories. That was the first. Uh, that was the first car you could that or a Suzuki wagon that you could have on uh, Gran Turismo One on the PlayStation. See, see, that was an <laughs> entry I, car. I yeah. loved my my Dihatsu Syrian, and mine yeah. was just the basic run of the mill model. It wasn't even anything that would lift kit or souped up, or <laughs> but it was just fun. It was uh, really quite a good utility car, and a lot of people used to say, "Oh, those things, man, that, is, is it safe? It's such a small car." And I said, "Actually, I did <laughs> have a situation where I got rear-ended by a police van." Uh, or a police, a police cruiser. Nice. And it happened on an on off ramp. And so I had, uh, you know, done my job and I'd looked over my shoulder and I'd pulled out beside a semi trailer to get a little bit of traction, turned off my AC. I was giving her, I was doing like <laughs> at least 80 kilometers an hour passing. And then suddenly my car speeds up and it, it feels like I've, I've hit the, the mother load of turbo boost. And I yeah. realized, no, no, I'm being pushed yeah. because the, the police cruiser came off the same on-ramp, did the shoulder check, gunned it, and didn't realize, hey, there's a Dihatsu there in front of him until it was, he's, you know, connected you the, with uh, me. Green ticket. So this is the funny thing. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine this one. So can you imagine the police officer's got to call his buddies to come. Four police cars show up because it's now the the police citation of shame. Yeah. And Everyone's uh, there just <laughs> taking the mick out of him. They were. And and so I get the thing and I didn't even pay attention to what color because I mean, you know, well, I'm naive, right? I'm thinking whatever, you know. And I get the thing and then I'm, I'm maybe two minutes away from where this happened and there's police lights going going on behind me and two police cars chasing me down. Dihatsu, I may be doing 85 kilometers an hour because at this point <sighs> I'm terrified and I'm thinking, what the heck, you know, my car, <laughs> which no frame damage, nothing to the car. And, you know, so got to say, that's well built. That's not a bad deal. Yeah. And uh, they pull me over and they, they apologize because they gave me the wrong sheet. They gave me the pink one and gave <sighs> him the green one. But they realized there was an error. So they did 
maybe they were going to give, you know, it, it, it could have gone wrong. Could have gone very wrong. But these yeah. two police cruisers did pull me over to make sure that I got the right color sheet. So I, I did that. Yeah, yeah, I got there in the end. And yeah, it happened. <laughs> The moral of the story is those these these more uh, economy priced vehicles don't necessarily have to be any less safe than no, the larger not. vehicles. No. And and I think it's always worth reminding people that when you go out and you buy that fantastic four wheel drive, just remember that when you get into a collision, especially if it's something that's going to hit a little bit close to the side, they tend to roll, and it doesn't really matter which one it is. At a certain speed, those things tip. And they do a nice, nice roll yeah. in a collision. And so you want to be, you want to be aware of that. Whereas vehicle saloons and cars, they don't tend to roll as much. No, uh, not definitely not much as four by fours. And it's pretty, it's pretty much uniform across the board. So uh, just something to remember when you're thinking safety. You know, just get a nice Volvo or, oh, what did I see today? The, the new Volkswagen, the Charimon. Oh, big one. Yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't look like Volkswagen. Well, it does. Well, it's not really, though, is it? I suppose it's <laughs> big, built in America. <laughs> I, Huge things. Well, I, you know, and I, I'm looking at, I'm driving behind it over by Emirates Towers, and I'm thinking, hmm, it doesn't kind of look. Like, and then I'm going, oh well, hold on a second. I did see uh, a golf a couple of days ago, and they've gotten a little bit wider and a little, you know, they squared it a little bit, but yeah, still yeah. round. It had, in true Volkswagen fashion, very much a similar backside. And mm. even though it's a giant vehicle, yeah, uh, it, beautiful, it it did have the Volkswagen look. And I, I I looked at this and I just said, I want one. I I don't even know what it's like inside. I just want I want one. I want to be driving that thing. I think uh, if if it, it, they are very very big, and yeah. it's weird because you you know you notice. I certainly noticed from when I first came here. Now comparing to seven years ago, the amount of small cars on the road is. Oh crazy compared it is, to it, then it, it, it is really much more like a european feel now well the fuel prices fluctuate now yeah. is and with the the they're not fixed anymore no. people are salaries are where they are inflation has hit where it's, where yeah, it's, it's hit globally not just not here necessarily yeah, yeah. housing school i mean everything people have to think about where they're spending their their yeah. durhams there's a lot of people who are still buying luxury vehicles and and things to adorn their driveways and have fun driving it. But if there's a, a whole portion of us, you and I, I, I think we put into that same bracket where automobiles, while I want a nice car, ultimately it's a transportation tool. And I'm going to put a whole bunch of kilometers on it. And I need something that's affordable to fix, affordable to drive and yeah. comfortable. Yeah. And, you know, it's, I hate to say it, Camrys, you know, Sunnies, Corollas, the CX-4s and 3s and, you know, hit across the board, Malibus and a little bit smaller than that, the Bolts and the Volts and yeah. uh, Rushes and, you know, the Duster. Yeah, the those Duster, are what people yeah, are buying. A lot of those around as well. There yeah. is. I, I, I was, you know, I, I always thought the Duster looked really cool and I think it looks really cool and I don't know what, I haven't been in one in a couple of years. Mm. Inside? Yeah, it didn't turn me on at all. No, they're not. Um, it made me, well, it made me again, want to cry. I don't think. I don't think they. Uh, <laughs> I don't think they position themselves as that. No, I think they just. You know, this is a car. It's safe. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's going to get you from A to B. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, like we've said before, with with other car, like, if you just do what you do, stand by it. Don't pretend to be anything. They're not. You know, they're not yeah. selling them for crazy money. They're not no. trying to push them to. You know, as a, as a luxury car. No. Nope. It's just an ideal. You can get five people in it. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. So so, what's what's kicking up at the shop these days? I mean, every I love to kick off the show every week just to find out what what is what are people bringing in? Is there any well, cyclical pattern going on here? No, we've got another. Um, so I think we we spoke a couple of weeks ago about uh, a mini. Yeah. Needed to replace the engine on it because it hadn't been serviced and. Mm-hmm. You've had a couple of those in the in the last while. There was well, the one with the oil. There was an oil yeah. thing where they so had. So now I've got a, 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 a guy I know that uh, I serviced his car at one hundred and fifty three thousand. So we did it for we did a service on it. Told him ten thousand kilometers. See you later. Yeah. Uh, so one hundred and sixty three, and he came back today at one hundred and eighty six. Hadn't changed the oil in all that time. No. Has he been driving it? Yeah. Yo. So it was one of those conversations where I was like, right. like, but I mean, this is the thing that kills me. Okay. So I can come to Sandance and I come into my garage or, you know, and, and I, I still use rage performance yeah. and all, I, I got to say, I mean, I, and I love Sam, 
your, your garage is easier to get to. Yeah, we are lucky there, yeah. <laughs> Even in busy traffic Our days. Our site is really easy to get to. <laughs> like, yeah. it's really easy, inconvenient, yeah. you know, to just drive in. Uh, anyway. Um, but even if you're not going to your, you know, mechanic of listing or title on your, your service manual, you can always stop at one of the fly by night guys. I mean, yeah. I don't mean fly by night, you know, and, and Enoch, Enoch, Epco, whatever, they've all got many, many, many of them have mm. an oil change guy. Yeah. And if those, and I, and I've occasionally gone to those guys and when they do it, I stand right there with them and I say, whoa, 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 hold on. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. The, you know, <laughs> what, are you, yeah. what, what are you doing there? What you doing? Yeah. Especially when they start putting that, you know, Teflon tape around. So, whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa, just whoa. Just change whoa. it, mate. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Change it. <laughs> you got a washer. Let's put the washer on. It's like, don't put, you guys, and the guy puts half a thing. It's like, no, let's take that off. That, yeah, the amount of uh, cars that come into us for an oil change, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I am. Um, I, I want to do the proper service with you, but I've had the oil change done in between. Yeah. But um, if we can do the oil again and do a, a full inspection, you know, you've got proper trained mechanics, blah, blah, blah. Usual stuff. And then you get the car up and it's like, I can't. I can't <laughs> take the drain plug out because somebody's covered it. <laughs> they buried it under about four packs of silicon because yeah. they decided they didn't want to change the drain plug. So to stop yeah. the leak, they just filled it with silicon. And yeah. then the silicon, you can just like press it. It's like a blister. Yeah. Like on a oh, jogger's oh, heel. And oh, it's like, oh, man. Yeah. It's what like, do you do? So yeah. then... Yeah, you, I mean, <laughs> you do the right thing, keeping your eye yeah. on, on that kind of stuff. But, but at, at least go, I mean, I, the, the point of the matter is at least get your oil changed. changed. Yeah, yeah. And worst case scenario, you're going to have a little leak. When the guy says, hey, do you want well, me to put the engine treatment in? No, don't put it in, please. This do, car is um, so he now 30, some, some 40,000 kilometers. Something removed. Valve Some cover, removed. Valve cover removed. <laughs> manually clean. Make sure the oil oh, pump and the oil man. pickup isn't blocked. So what what was the situation? Was he running without oil? No, no, he was just driving it and just forgot. You know, he's all, he's obviously. He's, I mean, on the on the. Does uh, he drive it hard? So it was a, a Q5. Obviously, the the service light will have come on, and he's yeah. just ignored it. Um, the change oil thing. It constantly says change oil. Yeah. It gives a little extra bing. Service due. Yeah. How much is this going to cost him now? Do you figure, like ballpark figure? Well, I, you know, the oil change service inspection would have been about four fifty. Yeah. Um, now he's looking at four thousand fifty. Yeah, you're probably looking at about five or six times that now. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I, realistically, there's fifteen hours labor to put into this now. Now, which would it. have been an hour. Yeah. Thirty minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always somebody I know. It's never just a guy <laughs> or a lady off the street. That's just driven by and thought, oh, I'll go there. I've, or I've heard about them or, you know, I've yeah. heard the podcast or I've heard yeah. whatever. Somebody I know. It's always somebody I know. Hey, by the way, like, I, by the way, just a side note, pause this thing that always someone you know, which is great because then you can at least share the story that, hey, this really <laughs> happened to someone I know yeah. is this, you know, um, I, I got a great compliment from uh, a couple of ladies who've been listening to our show. They said, what? look, we, we regular listeners to the podcast. They said, we want more. Cool. Keep, keep doing the shows, please, because you're, you're our drive home from work. And, yeah. and basically I said, and I asked them, I said, so what draws you to the show? And they said, look, this is actually education i said yeah. we're getting educated about cars i don't and they said we don't want to get ripped off when we go to the garage and so yeah. we we remember what you're talking about and so we and say partly we get the lingo partly we get the stories partly we were able to have a conversation with them and if you if you and, and they said you know if you if you have the basic ideas people don't tend to want to take you for a ride yeah. around the corner and then say oh you yeah, know we're gonna we're gonna get as many durms as we can out of this customer because they think okay hold on she knows something yeah and so they uh that's good to hear that yeah, that's what i said that's what we do it for that's what i, I said exactly well, we said it before well. yeah everybody you know data is relatively yeah. cheap i mean it's not cheap compared to to other parts of the world but it's cheap to what it was even hey, two years wait, ago hey, so hey, everyone's listening to podcasts downloading I, download I, while you're on wi-fi and listen to it MP3. well that's what i said. yeah Google, I, everyone says, how do I find you? I say, you know what? Google Podaholics with a K and it comes up yeah. all of the different ways you can find us or yeah. go to anchor.fm. Uh, you know, you find yeah. Podaholics there. That's where we live. But we're on 10 different platforms now, including iTunes and Spotify and Podbucket and the list goes on. Google, we're in the Google podcasts. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's simple. It's, it's that simple. Yeah. But, so why do you think your friends, people you actually know, they know you're the mechanic. Why wouldn't they just take the time to get the oil changed and people, basic repairs? People don't have time. They well, don't have to. You know, people just... Time fatigue. People just don't have time. You know, they're, they're time poor and, and, and 
we're all working hard, right? Yeah. So, and, and you can't go anywhere without a car. Yeah. It's very difficult in Dubai to go yeah. to, f- to work or from work without a car. You know, the metro is great and, and the tram is great and there's, there's taxis everywhere you turn, but it's so much easier in your own car. Yeah. And, and you just can't do, and, and a lot of people, you know, like, like me, okay, I could go to work in a taxi. But then I'm not going to get a taxi to go around the other branches or if I've got to yeah, meet a supplier yeah, yeah. or I've got to go and pick something up. So a lot of people have the same thing. They've got meetings off site. And so you can't, you know, you need your car. And instead of thinking, you know what, I'll get it in on the Friday or the Saturday when I'm not at work. Yeah. People just forget, you know, brunch on a Friday or. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. Yeah, I mean, we can only do so much, right? We, yeah. we, we offer to collect cars. We offer to deliver them Did- back. We, we. Do you do you guys do any? Week. You're open seven days a week. Yeah, you're in, really? Yeah, yeah. We obviously rotate the staff, so it yeah. gets the time off. I mean, and you're not there seven days a week yourself. No, no, no. I've, I've uh, unfortunately. Although I do tell people, call them twenty four seven. Unfortunately, some clown invented the mobile phone, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, well, we can just blame Alexander Graham Bell, even though yeah. he didn't invent the mobile, no, but he started he, it. He was probably thinking about it. He started it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all his fault. Yeah. And, and you know, and, and his big problem was, and, he, and I always loved the way, the way he he shifted gears. So if, if he'd even thought of mobiles, because he was he was just simply trying to figure out duplexing on telegraph lines, mm. and uh, hit the telegraph line, heard the swearing through the telegraph line on the other <laughs> side, and it's like, whoa, <laughs> we're gonna change tact here. Yeah. Now look, <laughs> everybody's stressed. <laughs> they are stressful. I mean, it's yeah. you, I, I come to the point now where I I, I don't. My, my phone is in my bag, which is never near the front of my, my car. So it's, some folks will say, well, what do you use for navigation? I said, you know what? I got to take a look before I get going because, or I, you know, because I, I don't want to look at the phone, but I, I never answer calls in the car because it, they're too, even though there could be Bluetooth or I've got the headset on, they're so distracting yeah. that I always miss turnoffs or miss <laughs> things. Yeah. And I've had that happen more than once. It's like, oh no, it happened the other day. I was uh, driving and I was on the headset and I was talking, talking, talking. And then I realized, oh no, now I'm heading up to Dragon Mart. <laughs> and I needed to really get off on to Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. Well, you know how long you have to go. Oh, yes, yeah, turn around now. To turn around. The new, yeah. And it was during rush hour. Uh, so what would have been a five-minute thing added an hour to the trip nice. because I couldn't turn around. And yeah. I waited in line yeah. for the privilege of not being able to turn around. <laughs> yeah, they should, de- <laughs> they should definitely, um, they should oh, definitely uh, yeah. just go go live with the Because it exists, the technology exists yeah. to stop phones working in cars. I don't know why they don't do it. But then again, we're not going to be driving our own cars soon. So it doesn't really matter. It's, it. We talk about that. And I, I'm yeah. more and more, I mean, Elon Musk is launching the next feature, the next, next version of his autopilot. And everyone's looking at this. Yeah. I mean, this is, it's coming. Yeah. It yeah, yeah. really is coming fast. Yeah. It's frightening. And I, and good, it's, it'll be more. It, it becomes yet another way to take up more of our time, because then you got no excuse. Because cars are, especially in North America, everyone. My my brother gets a brand new car. It's got an IP address. It comes with a year of data. Yeah. So he get so you know being the cheapskate that he is, he doesn't have. He you know he lets his his. Uh, Wi-Fi run out in his home. He lets his internet run out. He just uses his car. Yeah. Well, <laughs> fair play. <laughs> Fair play. <laughs> it's like, how much no, do you have? He says, it seems to be unlimited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It seems to be good. I've not had the bill yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you see the, uh, the video of the, the Shanghai parking lot with the Tesla? Yes. Nasty. <laughs> that was like, uh, the whole Galaxy Note 7 thing and yep. the 787 Dreamliner and all that wrapped into one that. Yeah. Yeah. Poor old Audi sat next to it. Yeah. It's, yeah. There, there are things that you just don't want to see. No, and then the the SpaceX as well. The, oh, I know that was like, what's going it's on? Been here? a great week for uh, Mr. Musk, is it? Well, you know, and this is the thing about technology. Actually, it really it really ticks me off a little bit. And I've been listening to a, a lot of podcasts recently. I wanted to ask you what kind of podcast you're listening because you get about a good hour and a half each each day as you commute around yeah. into the office. And then if you're commuting around to your variety of branches, you you've got a lot of time to hit podcasts. But yeah, but this is the thing that kind of eats away at me like a cancer in the brain is we're spending a lot of time thinking about the space station, which is great. We mm. got that where we're talking Mars and all these kind yeah. of things. We got this big flotilla of plastic out in the Pacific 
Yeah. And we've got multiple layered plastics that don't, you can't recycle them with yeah. our current technologies. And you got all sorts of issues going on with, we've got wonderful recycling services and, and maybe things get recycled, maybe they don't. Like even New York City can't figure out recycling because yeah. of contaminants. And like that. 10% of plastic yeah. in the US is recycled. And, right? and we haven't figured out how to do any of that stuff at all. Yeah. And we, you, you know, it's, it, there was a, there was a great one. They were talking about, you know, forget about all that stuff. So, so that's important. But then what just about the food waste we have that's yeah. going into landfill that shouldn't go into landfill because you, you, you they've got, um, and I think, I think they were talking about Vancouver in Canada that it's figured this out is what they do is they collect all the food waste. They put it into giant sealed containers and they let it break down and they put, um, you know, it's got a release on the top and they, they grab all of the gas coming out, which is methane. They convert it and they use it to fuel buses. So it, it, it could cool. be Vancouver or it could be Edmonton or Calgary. Cool. It's one of those, and you know, it might be Calgary actually. And so they're fueling their buses from the methane from food waste that, cool, that then breaks all down and they use it as fertilizer. Yeah. Yeah. That's and cool. I'm going, why? And so I understand we want to explore the galaxies. I understand we want to do all this stuff, but I'm thinking, you know, we've got a whole <laughs> bunch of things that are really yeah. going wrong right here, right now. I mean, it's the, the thing is, I mean, you know, these things all happen side by side yeah you know, that it's it's not it's obviously not a room of 20 scientists and you just no. say right stop working on the mars <laughs> mission let's, <laughs> yeah, let's figure out the let's plastic thing but There's maybe they people, could do but, that but the, <laughs> obviously the space exploration gets the whole gets the headlines well right? it's sexy it's yeah, exactly sexy. that's it that's exactly what it is and um no it's it's a big it's always been a a, a concern maybe having kids change that a bit even more for me but the wastage of stuff and, and, you know, even to the point where I'll say to my wife, okay, uh, so the baby's obviously still having formula now, but yeah. I go, how, how many, uh, how many scoops or how many ounces of uh, formula for this feed? Yeah. Like on a Friday when I'm there. Yeah. And she'll be like seven. I'm like, oh. should we do six? If she, if she finishes it, I'll do it. No, seven. And then if she wastes a bit, I'm like, oh, yeah. anyway, yeah. Yeah. Uh, even that, and that's such a silly thing to think about, but you know, the waste is crazy, but, these things are all happening, but you you, you just don't hear about that kind of stuff because it's no. it, it it's just not like you say it's just not sexy. It's not appealing going well, to space is, but the thing yeah. is, you know, the the technology that's involved in in anything, you know, with with space exploration, even recycling. Whenever you're at the cutting edge and at the forefront of, of the technology, you're pioneering something. Things will go wrong. Yeah. And the thing is, when space but things... But they learn from it and... Yeah, well, when space things go wrong, it's like, oh, yeah, it's okay. It's really yeah. hard to get someone on the moon. When someone makes a mistake trying to, you know, figure out a way to break plastic down and turn it into yeah. a, bio, you know, biological material, which ultimately it was originally because it came from hydrocarbon. Yeah. Um, and they do it wrong or they waste the grant they're not getting the grant for that. No. Because, you know, what are they going to, how do they get that? And and yeah. that, that, that really bothers me. The, yeah. the fact that there's a, there's like a snobbery with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, we'll get there in the end. <laughs> we'll get there in the end. I mean, the whole recycling thing and, and cars is quite well linked because whatever they're going to do with, with electric cars when it comes to seven, oh, eight years down the line. batteries, where are they, what are they doing with the batteries? Yeah, How are I they going to recycle them? In 25 years, it won't matter if we're still doing battery powered cars and, and, mm. and, and I'm sure they'll have improved to the point where it doesn't really matter but this whole first generation of them and there's a lot going out there at the minute, there's a lot of them there. Um, what are they going to do with those? Because these batteries are not going to last for a long time. They, they, they're not and, and that was one of the first things that people used to say that, that were against electric cars yeah. well what are you going to do with the battery it's only going to last for seven years so that's something to think about but I'm sure they'll get there and by the time it becomes a problem which will be coming soon in the I, next two or three I, years I don't know I I'm, I mean I hope so I mean I I would love to hear again you know who who tipped this bucket in the first place Mr. Elon Musk I'd like to hear from him what are what are the thoughts on the recycling of these batteries because yeah. it's not just this battery it could be well, any battery what are the we thoughts we need to get him back on Joe Rogan well we'll try yeah. and get him on here but we yeah. can't get him a joint we'll wouldn't that be nice if he flew in and he said hey I want to be on Podholics yeah <laughs> I think the uh, his rider of a, a certain herb, we can't really help yeah, him out with help here. Him. Joe Rogan's uh, yeah, he ain't gonna help. All right with the law where he is, but we we can. But you know what? We we could we could treat him to a hubbly bubbly of uh, you know a little shisha of uh, candy apple maybe. Or Coffee's something. good over here. Uh, yeah, we yeah. do great coffee. Yeah, and we'll 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 buy two. Yeah, <laughs> two coffees. <laughs> 
And uh, a hit of shisha candy apple. There we go. Yeah. Elon there Musk. There we're, we're willing to do that. And, and you know what? I'll drive you around without the windows in on my Jeep. Guarantee there's somebody. <laughs> guarantee there's somebody in the sea, which potentially means there's somebody that could be listening to us that will have had a, a direct connection to yeah. Elon Musk. 100%. Yeah. yeah. There we go. We're going to find that person. Yeah, let's and get him on here. I was over in Emirates Towers today, and I ran into a couple people who have just excelled in the stuff they do. Uh, PK Galati is one of them, and he's just doing amazing things. PK might know. And it's funny, you run into people, and they say, how long have we known each other? And you start going back, and it, you, you forget all the people you know who are still around and what they're doing and you kind of you know someone says oh do you know someone is like oh yeah i kind of do but i don't want to you know so they're, they're yeah. a friend i don't really want to <laughs> yeah like, can i have their number no no <laughs> can you hook me up with them i'll have a chat but uh, I mean, i'm not making a z- i'm making zero promises here <laughs> but yeah you know, pk might know him. yeah well shout out to uh elon you welcome on yeah anytime i mean yeah. absolutely i mean we're not going to pay you but <laughs> i'm sure you don't really need it exactly I, I, i'm thinking he must just you know, drive through here every once in a while. And I know yeah. over by you, they've got the official te- one of the Tesla approved body shops. Yeah, which I thought resources, was, yeah. yeah, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah, and uh, I don't, I don't know what they do there. I don't know what they're fixing, but you know, how many they Tesla- do a lot of insurance work through there. Yeah, but how many Teslas are getting knocked down? Like that's my my question. How many are getting in accidents? It's all the uh, it's it's all the luddites in the patrols and <laughs> and GMC Sierras <laughs> with huge exhausts on. <laughs> It's like driving over them. <laughs> Maybe. And just like they've all got ICE internal combustion engine tattooed on their arm <laughs> yeah. in a love heart. Never. It's never. Like over the top of where it used to say mom. <laughs> You've got ICE. <laughs> yeah. Ah. I don't know how they fare in accidents, to be fair. They, they've I, obviously I, got uh, fail safes for, for yeah. an accident, which would work, I assume, to, to cut the battery power off. Because even I on guess. a 12-volt system, uh, you know, you have to have um, pyrotechnic disconnection for the battery in case there's a, a short circuit so yeah. yeah yeah they must they must hey uh, you've got a great question about a sunny and okay. the, the person wanted to know what's the downside of putting a lift kit on my sunny and i'm thinking who <laughs> that was exactly my response and, and the response was because this is an audio environment yeah. was the eyebrows on glenn's face kind of went up oh, a wow. little bit like charlie chaplin mm. kind of like and, uh, and all it said to me is who gave you this question yeah. <laughs> well wasn't it um wasn't it uh imtashan who was in old man and oh yes. Was a, yes was that a corolla <laughs> i think that was a corolla and he sent the photos a winch of, and a lift kit on it yeah he sent the photos of a corolla like that yeah i mean there's no downside to putting a lift kit on a sunny but i mean you'll be awesome but <laughs> why <laughs> maybe just to look cool it won't uh, though will it <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how much you would lift it. Like, wh- how much higher would you make the thing? You know, I, it's not going to look cool. I mean, I mean, it's going to look different <laughs> if you want to look different. It's not going to look cool. I mean, it's going to look. Um, yeah. The downside to it is the accident you cause. Do, do, I mean, do, when when I take the thing to RTA, then is are they gonna if I put a lift kit on my car and like a Sunny or anything like you know are, are they gonna then have issues with that? Do you think there's potential for that? But I think as long as uh, as long as everything on there is is safe, yeah, and and matches you know if if they if they have an inspection list that they can follow, as yeah. long as your car fits around that, then then and it's safe, then they'll pass it. Yeah. Obviously, if you've got something hanging off the back of it or on the front of it that's that's dangerous or something on the roof that's not secured properly, then yeah. they'll fail it. But right. Should have no reason to, to fail it just for it being lifted. The the number of vehicles that I know of, when we think of lifting and we think of modification, you know, you think of the Wranglers, you think yep. of the Tahoes, you think of Ford products, and, and the list goes on. I never think of a Nissan Sunny. No. <laughs> no. Maybe a little tinting, maybe a little wing on the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that, 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 you know, I, I know some Filipino guys who they like to have the spoilers. Yeah. And they put the spoiler on the back and. It yeah. might work in Manila. I'm not so sure it works here. Yeah, but well, I mean, every uh, everyone's got their own taste in yeah. cars. You yeah. know, we've said it about yeah. everything. You know, <laughs> yes. it, some some people uh, treat them as a, as a uh, like a tattoo. It's yeah. just an extension of themselves. But there's some shocking. Uh, there used to be a great website. I don't know if it's still live called Barry Boys. Uh-huh. And um, <laughs> used to be able to go on there, and it is just. In fact, I'm typing it in now because if yeah. it's still live, there's some great photographs on there. And people would just like spot horribly modified cars in the UK. 
There we go. Well, uh, but yeah. hey, and, and there's a quote that goes with this. Are you ready for it? One's man, one man's garbage is yeah. another man's ungarbage. That's and where does that quote come from? That's that's fine. <laughs> Trailer Park Boys but, <laughs> scored. You've won one. <laughs> you've won one. But these are. Yeah, definitely. You're looking at some images. <laughs> you're you're shaking your head. These are not good. <laughs> these are, these are, they're just not. They're yeah. just not good. I mean, how how do how do people do it and, and then think know. it's a good idea? Yeah, they, they're just trying to look different. That's all. Just trying to look different. Yeah, and, and they're never going to get anyone to drive with them. <laughs> See, no. You don't have any trouble finding your car in the parking lot. It's like, oh yeah, which one is it? Yeah, it's, it's the, the special one. Oh, yes. The special <laughs> one, yeah. Whichever way you want to use that phrase. Yeah. Uh, quick question as it's getting warmer, the, and this is a, a great one. Uh, oil. Do we need to change the grade of the oil in the summer, or can I just run same grade all year round? No, not anymore. Um, that's why we've got multi-grades. Uh, yeah. So you've got things, uh, you've got the little W in the oil grade, so you'll have something yeah. like 5W40. That's so, exactly what's in my vehicle. So the W is uh, basically, in, in layman's terms, stands for winter. So okay. it gives you a, a, a flow rate. The numbers refer to flow rate at zero degrees um, and then at 100 degrees. So before you used to have 90-grade uh, oil or 10-grade oil, you'd have a 5W or a or a 40, and you'd have a winter oil and a summer oil. So you'd have a thinner oil in the winter mm-hmm. and a thicker oil in the summer. But you don't have to do that now. Okay. They're multi-grade. And they, Just they keep work. going. Yeah. Just keep should I should I be changing my oil more when it's a hotter temperature, or should I just keep following the standard five or ten thousand? Uh, it's probably not a bad idea to change it more here, just because it gets so hot yeah. and the engine works a lot harder. There's a lot less oxygen in the air; it's less dense, so you get a lot more carbon in it. So, not a bad idea to change the oil more here. But as we yeah. say, no, no, nobody's um, nobody's going to do that. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's there's a good there's, idea there's no it. downside to changing your oil every five thousand k. As long right? as you put in the right oil. Yeah. It's yeah. probably good. Yeah, you're, getting, yeah. you're getting rid of the junk. Yeah. yeah. But exactly. again, we're always looking for ways to extend it. You know, I get that synthetic stuff in there and I can go for yeah. you know, 20,000 kilometers or whatever it is these days. It's it's ridiculous in some cases. Well, you know, you get, I, like say, I remember coming from the UK and they launched long life service at uh, VW and it was uh, two years or 20,000 miles. That's a lot of distance. <laughs> like yeah. the, the number of things that could go wrong with your vehicle yeah. and then... In, with that, you've gone through a summer, a winter, a summer, a fall, a spring. Yeah. You, you, your car's been that was tortured. Like two thousand two, yeah. two thousand three, maybe, and it was, um, it was specifically Castrol oil. Did it? It was five W thirty Castrol Long Life. Hmm. Um, by the time I'd left it, it was like Long Life four or Long Life five oil. Long maybe. Life Supreme. So yeah, way, twenty thousand miles or two years. So like in your warranty term. You'd, yeah. you'd buy the car and you'd only get one service in the warranty, yeah. which is crazy yeah. to me. <laughs> uh, speaking of, uh, you know, crazy things and thinking of driving, you seen the new KFC burger that's advertised on the lamppost, the no. boss? No. <laughs> KFC no, boss, think of a Big Mac, but instead of having got Google it, hamburger pot, uh, patties, you've got chicken in between. Well, that wins every day. Two two nice big things of chicken, three pieces of bread. I'm trying to figure out how you eat that if you're driving. This isn't like a <laughs> prearranged sponsorship <laughs> thing. We, no, haven't got, we aren't getting anything out of this. But if you're looking at it now. The boss. Yeah, it looks good. It does look good. But how do you think you eat that if you're driving a car? Because there's a lot of people no, who are not supposed to do that. <laughs> I know, but there's people who are going to stop at the KFC, at the petrol station. They're going to grab that bad boy. How do you, how do you think you're going to eat that? No. <laughs> it takes two hands. And I'm not even sure you can squish it down. <laughs> no, you're not eating that driving. Well, you could have a go. You're definitely uh, going to fail. The only one who succeeds is Andrew Thomas because he'll have it embedded, embedded in his beard. And, you know, you just kind of lift it up. You know, it's like, I don't think it's going to work for anybody. <laughs> I, I just want to go to KFC to watch people eat that thing. That's. <laughs> you want to watch people eat I want to see the how Boss they eat, Burger. I want to see how they eat that thing. This is a whole different podcast. <laughs> we is, should do that. Yeah, this is a this is a strange... We're gonna, we should do a video podcast for that. We can do that one. We're just going to go to KFC. We're going to yeah. be the mystery watchers. The, the, the voyeurs. <laughs> Maybe they'll start putting voyeur booths in there. <laughs> they should. Yeah. 
<laughs> Come on, watch people oh, no, at the bus. No, I, I, so I was in South Africa uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, and I, I, I like so I, I enjoy TripAdvisor. So I often write reviews of places I went to, and I was serious at, reviews. Uh, no, they're 100 percent serious. Oh, okay, I don't write spoof reviews. I write <laughs> the real reviews. And so I'm at this one restaurant, and you know the, the food was okay. In fact, the food was great, but the service was, yeah, it could have been better. Like, you know, they didn't even offer me a second beverage. And I'm thinking, you know, I could have used another, a, another craft beer. And I wasn't driving, so what's the deal, right? And, and so I just put down in my review, I said, yeah, the food was okay, but maybe the service could have been a little bit better. And, you know, for instance, I didn't even get offered uh, another, another drink. No, not, not even a soda, nothing. And I thought, hmm. And so they write me back on trip. I said, Oh, that's really unfortunate to hear because we, we, we pride ourselves on good food. And I said, well, no, nah, you got good food, but the service was, and they said, if you could tell us based on your invoice from the thing, which who, who keeps that? I don't know if I have my invoice. <laughs> Give us the invoice number. We'll check back on the video surveillance cameras to s- the time you were there to take a look and see how the service was. And I'm going, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no. Yeah. I mean, A, I don't want some server to get nailed for that. And, and B, it's, you know, just talk to your people to make sure that they're just, you know, following through on things. It's just a general comment. I've, I've complained about a couple of things in the past and they always ask for a name and it's like, you know what? Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to get the guy in trouble. Yeah. I, I mean, I think just generally work with your people, but I thought that they would actually review the camera. Uh, That's taken it a step further. We had to review the cameras this week because somebody lost their, uh, oh no, their golf clubs. In your garage? No, no. They they they'd been to the garage and they yeah. they couldn't remember whether they were in there at the time or not. Right. And uh, it, it was an S six, and we'd done the battery on it. And uh-huh. The battery's in in the boot in the trunk. So we'd obviously, if we had the golf clubs been there, we would have had to have taken Take them, them out. out right. But CCTV spotted it. Now there's no golf clubs in there. So mm. did they find them? I don't think so, not yet. And they didn't apologize either and say, no. did they apologize? No, they, I oh, mean, yeah, he, okay. was, he was, he was okay. cool with it. He was okay, just good. like, look, mate, I'm wit's end. Yeah. I've Continue. been to you guys since having them. I've yeah. used them like two times and now I can't find them. I just yeah. wanted to check if, if you guys had maybe taken them out and then forgotten to put them back in. Oh, I yeah. said, I don't think so. There's none lying around. Yeah. Um, I'm not a golfer, so I ain't going to nick them. Yeah. So uh, we yeah, had a look on there, on there and uh, no. They weren't in there. Good thing to have. I mean, there you covered your you covered yourself great. So there, I mean, there are reasons to have it. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's uh, good it for everyone. Us out for it helped us. Out. I mean, he wasn't accusing us. No, no, but it's just and and just to keep an eye on things. If you know yeah. if 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 people in the shop are, I've got some complaints about things too. I mean, it gives everyone yeah. that that opportunity to say, well, let's go check out the camera and, and take a look. Yeah, well, I'd always wanted to have um, uh, like. Basically, live a, a live stream. Yeah. So when someone's car's in there, they can just log in. I love that idea because uh, we um, we stupidly have cats, and uh, uh-huh. we we used to send them to a kennel, right. cattery, whatever you call yeah, it, yeah. and they would send you a link for the can for the cameras. Uh-huh. And uh, I just thought, well, why don't we do that for cars? But it does become complicated. And to be fair, most people that that, that bring their cars in, there's there's very few. The percentage of take or uptake on that would be quite small. Mm. Nobody really cares. No, no. I mean, you you would you would probably I'd probably watch the whole. Well, thing. Well, no, you would probably be there anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd be underneath, and you'd be going, yeah. "Hey, dude, yeah." It's like, <laughs> so, put a coffee yeah. shop in. Then you got a barber shop yeah, here, a coffee very, shop. Very few people that would be interested in it. Doctor Jenna sets up her doctor's office there. Then <laughs> we're done. I won't be all looking <laughs> at my car go anyway. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's. Um, I've always thought about doing it, but I know, think it's a great idea though. Or even just you know a little bits so that people can. And we always send videos and pictures of, of things we've found on people's yeah. cars. If if you know yeah. if they ask or if we think it's worth showing them. Like for instance, the the one with, with my. Uh, my friend's uh, oil this morning. I yeah, sent, sent him a it. video of it because I was like, look, mate. What's his response to that? Well, it's, so back to this is a, if you've been listening to the show and, or you just tuned into this podcast, <laughs> you fast forwarded through. We were talking about a, uh, what, an S6, S5? A5. A5. Uh, Q5. Sorry. Q5. Q5 that uh, hadn't had the regular oil service for, I don't know, 40,000 yeah, kilometers. Gone, gone like 33 or 36,000. 30, yeah. And what would it cost? You know, 500 Durham's, 450 is now going to cost 10 times that. Yeah. Because of not getting that service done, so you sent the pictures to your your buddy. What what was the response? Four letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, and it's it's just what's what's the person going to say? They're mad at themselves because yeah. you just bring you well, just the, giving the them service, the bad news. The service was due at one sixty three, and it's now one eighty six. So um, all but hundred kilometers, it's exactly twenty three thousand overdue. 
twenty three thousand overdue. Yeah, um, it's like three services in there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, I've got the uh, I've well, got the the video there. Obviously, this is great audio, but yeah. that's the oil. Oh man, it looks like molasses. They're pouring the oil out. It truly is thick and black like molasses. Yeah. yeah. And everyone knows that the oil that goes into your car kind of looks like honey. Well, the problem is, light if honey. we go and put Cooking new oil, oil in there, yeah, you're done for. The chances are he's going to get an issue, oil pressure warning light on, knocking yeah. noise, because the new oil is going to break down some of the carbon deposits, but not all of them, and yeah. they're just going to block oil galleries up. Well, so then he comes for a, an oil change, and, and uh, then he's uh, two weeks later, he's calling me up saying, my engine's failed. Yeah. It's your fault. Yeah. Which at that point it would have been because I, I it's, yeah. you know, you've not done due diligence if you haven't pointed yeah. that out. So, you know, it's one of those where I'm sorry, but this is the situation we're in. And uh, let's stick to the 10,000 kilometers next time. Yeah. Do you think you will? No. No. Because <laughs> the engine hasn't failed. <laughs> yeah. No. Because the engine hasn't failed. But it's failed. still five grand at the end of the day if we're looking up there. I mean, yeah. that's going to be, a, that's a hit. Yeah. I mean, I, you can't, you can't do that every year. You don't want to, no. Plus, no. It, plus, how many days is it going to take to fix that? I mean, you know, you're looking at a couple of days at least. Yeah, only two days there. Yeah, I've got like 15 hours. But that's 15 hours. That's a long yeah. time. Yeah. I mean, no one wants their vehicle to be out of line 15 hours. Plus, we've got to, we, you know, we've got to put uh, two lots of flushing oil through it, two yeah. lots of additive, and then the final amount of oil in it, two filters. What a lot of waste. Yeah. I mean, that's just that's just makes you mad. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it is it is one of those things. We, we get it all the time. Yeah. And uh, it's it, it's more commonly observed with the uh, engine because we, we service the engine more regularly. But the, the biggest one, especially this time of year when people notice it, is AC. And most of the people's problems that happen with AC, apart from the un- unfortunate leaks yeah. in evaporators and, and, and seals and stuff, but most of the yeah. problems is just because people forget that that also needs maintenance as well. Is this is this gender neutral or are women better at getting their vehicles repaired than guys or is this go across the board? Men and women equally are negligent when it comes the to... The people that notice things. it more, and this doesn't have to be a man or a woman, the people that tend to be more cautious on with AC are the people that pick up the kids from school. There you go, yeah. Because the kids are you know, getting in the car so they're, yeah. they're more worried about it being not roasting hot yeah so if if it's the the husband or the wife whoever it is that takes the children to and from school they will be the people to notice the ac more more mm. uh more frequently than not in fact i'd say almost every single one of them is oh you know taking the kids to school and it was a bit warm they're in the warm. back and yeah. they're because yeah. Yeah, okay. they're in the back and if you've not got split ac so you haven't got a unit in the back which still still even nowadays not all cars have and even the ones that have they're not the best in yeah. the back anyway so yeah Man, okay. Hey, here's a great one that maybe it fits along right along this line. I have a an engine run on issue here, and it says again, plugs were changed, and this engine run on issue stopped three weeks. Uh, the, so the and the, the plugs were changed three weeks ago. Engine run on stopped, but now it's back. Does that sound okay. like to you? Well, so basically, so what is engine run on? Basically, that's a the engine just you turn off your ignition. You turn, turn the ignition off, and, off and, and the engine's pop, 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 sort of pop, dying to a stop. Pop, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, changing the plugs and it stopping for a while may just be a little bit of a fluke. Fluke, really. Mm. Um, it doesn't normally have any, unless unless the issue is the fact that um, it's running on because it's, get, it's burning oil that's leaking in through Ooh. past the plugs. And that's then obviously idea. you take the plugs out. They're clean when they go back in, and until they get saturated again, it's not doing that. Um, it can be, it can be that situation, but um, oil entering the combustion chamber is normally the, the cause of it, and, and it can be through breathers, which it can be through oil leaks that go past the spark plugs. Mm. So um, yeah. there's, there's a lot actually when you look at engines these days, they are pretty complicated. The engine block with the seals and all that stuff, they're pretty complicated. Like there's a lot of potential areas where if something is loosened off it's gotten too warm, too much pressure, that you can develop these minuscule leaks that just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember um, I remember once uh, back home we had a, a car in and we were doing, there was a recall for the fuel injector. It was diesel. And uh, the customer was coming in for the recall. And what had happened is, obviously, the, the reason for the recall had, had already, uh, the failure had already occurred. Yeah. And as they were driving literally into the workshop, 
the diesel was leaking out of the injector and it was going into the cylinder and it was filling the oil um, sump basically with with diesel. Yeah. And uh, they switched the car off because it was really all over the place and it just didn't shut off and the engine was just racing and they couldn't stop. They couldn't stop the yeah. engine running because it was just burning all the fuel, all the excess fuel in there. Um, so, so these uh, these little slight little problems can cause big issues. Yeah. But yeah. oil leaks, coolant leaks, they never get smaller. So they might stay <laughs> they might stay minor for a while. Yeah. But they'll never fix themselves. Mm. So I I did see some stuff at one of the uh, one of our shops. It might have been Carrefour. I don't know. I was walking down the aisle. And they they did have an oil leak stop mm. stuff that you can put in. That'll be good. And apparently it stops the oil leaks. Yeah, that's right. Yep. <laughs> you don't buy it? No. Said on the thing. I'll tell you what, right? It might have been STP brand or something. I don't know. Yeah. That'd be good. <laughs> normally stuff like that, <laughs> that's normally like a seal conditioner. So it's normally yeah. rubber seal conditioner. Cause it's like, what would that be? Just like a conditioner of some sort. Like yeah, it can't to, be good to in soften the, the rubber seal up. It might expand the rubber seal a little bit because normally they're leaking because they've shrunk. Right. So what's it do to my oil? Can't be good. <laughs> I don't, only, I don't make that stuff. It was only a 250 mil bottle. Yeah, I don't make that stuff. I mean, I know uh, Colin from We Will Fix It used to work for the guys that did oil flush or oh, yeah? fuel system additive. So hold on a second. I knew I he worked remember. for Kraft in the dessert market. I knew mm. he worked for PlayStation. I didn't know he worked for the... Uh, an I can't remember part. which company it was. It might yeah. be Fuchs. All right, we'll sort yeah, that out next week. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, he'll probably tell you about all the uh, snake oil that they put in those <laughs> kind of things. <laughs> yeah. So it, when someone's selling you something that's too good to be true, it is too good well, to be true. I mean, how true. long do you want that to last for, right? Ever. Right. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to have to get any gaskets, any seals fixed. I want to put it in and oil leak is gone and I am good to go. Yeah. Well, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. No. Okay. So it's it's a stopgap, but it's just going to prolong it. Yeah, it's like cracking an egg into the radiator. Yeah, okay. You know, you got, it might get you out of the jungle if you're stuck, but if you've got an egg in you in the jungle, what are you doing? Why would I put an egg in my radiator? The egg white sets, doesn't it, as it, as it gets yeah. hot and then as it's exposed to the air, it sets and fixes a leak for you for, I don't know how long they'd, they'd say. Obviously, if the leak's huge, it's not going to, if, you, if, a, you know, if you've driven into a parrot, yeah. And it's gone through the radiator, you're screwed. Yeah. But if you've got a little pinhole in the radiator, right. it's going to help you. Okay, so, good uh, to know. Yeah. Keep that one in mind. Yeah. I, how would, how, I mean, not that we're going to experiment with this, but just... Uh, so turmeric, if, turmeric in the radiator as well. Okay. So if I was to do that, not that I'm going to try, <laughs> does it does it have to be hot? Like, is, you, you, well, obviously, yeah. You, yeah so how do you, be hot to cook so how do you take off the cap without the thing in blowing up in your face and you get the four degree third this degree is kind burns. of the point i was getting to <laughs> it's kind like, of the point or you I just stand to. there and fire the eggs at it get you could just it. throw it the radiator <laughs> and, and the window and and the people who are there it's like yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it sounds like snake oil there is that what you're getting at it's like there's i'm just <laughs> saying these things that are out there this <laughs> people say a lot of stuff but uh yeah the turmeric, take it to the garage the turmeric one was when i, I was actually here and a uh, customer came in not with turmeric and uh so i've got a coolant leak i've been topping it up and it's been okay and i've been putting turmeric in like like it was nothing like he was saying just normal <laughs> stuff to me. like you know uh, just a normal conversation <laughs> he said what and i was like no i didn't say that no, it's fine i mean english wasn't his first language yeah, yeah. so i'm thinking i've misheard him that's my yeah. my ignorance so he gets the car in the workshop and i lift the bonnet up and sure enough there is a little bag of turmeric <laughs> Straight off rail six and carry four. Oh, it's like what? There's not a hope I'm ever going to put anything like that in my car. Yeah. It's got a water pump. Mm. It's who knows? It's it's going through the block of the engine. Yeah. It clogs up one of the the ports. I'm done for. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, fair play to these people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So what do you think's going on with this engine run on? Well, just I would, the oil. I would just say it's, it's it's normally oil vapor. So you okay. got you got an issue an issue with the breather potentially or, or the the oil separator. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you know maybe maybe look at the. It depends on what kind of engine it is. But if the spark plugs are sealed individually, so if they're in through the top of the valve cover rather than on the side of the engine, there yeah. might be a seal that's leaking oil down into there. But then when they've changed the spark plugs, they should have told you that unless they didn't know necessarily what they were doing. Yeah. Well, that's. Um, it, there's there's not much else unless unless you've got an issue with the ignition so when you turn it off it isn't actually switching off on time or you've got a short circuit or some kind of issue there um but you've got to start basic and i would say normally it's oil 
Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Well, here's a quick one. Uh, this one happened. This I, I observed this one the other day. Okay. So anyone who, who's around Murdoch, Murdoch City Center, and you know if you're in Murdoch, there's a nice ring road that goes uh, on the other side from Murdoch City Center. Mm-hmm. So we're just doing our thing, and it's a 60 kilometer limit if you're going as fast as you should be going in a, in a, in a, you know, a residential area. Mm-hmm. And this Mercedes comes flying past me. I mean, easily doing 120. He's doubling my speed. You know, it's one of these nice S something or others. You know, it's it's not a G wagon. We're talking a low rider. And I'm watching, and I'm going, I'm saying, wife, well, you think he's going to slow down? Because there's a big, mad speed bump mm. that's kind of there, but kind of, if you don't know it's there until you're on it, you don't realize. And it's not one of these ones you get lift. It's just like a nice little little hump that's kind of not done in a way that you can go over it fast without it really <laughs> making your suspension go. <laughs> mm. And this guy, or gal, I don't know, blacked out windows, flies by me and I look at this point I look over the wife thinking okay he's weaved in around me and he's got there and now he's hitting this and he's, and he's going at this thing hits it full speed at least 120 and I wasn't sure if it was the dirt that might have been around it but when we got close I didn't really see any dirt this brown plume comes out from under the car but he didn't slow down they kept going and I'm thinking wonder what kind of damage they could have done to and I'm thinking rims I'm thinking suspension yeah. i'm thinking who knows what might have hit underneath because i was trying to figure out what the brown little bit of that smoke. was them realizing there was a speed on but it was too late yeah, that's what it, the brown was and yeah. it was it mean they literally it was about 120k it had to be it was if it wasn't 120 it might have been more but i what i don't think it was any less because you know when you see people slow down yeah. and they, there was no slowing down i think they were accelerating over this thing i thought wow i wish they were my customer they sound like you know you Printing money, yeah. And them coming to your shop. Well, I figured this was. Yeah, there, I think there was going to be a whole bunch of damage done to this car. Yeah, we start with you take it in order. You got tires, wheels, all the suspension from lower arms all the way through spring shocks. Yeah, everything. So even you know top mounts, top mounts of the strut is going to get a real hammer in there. So yeah. you got you 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 can go even, look a tire for one of those cars. The right tire for one of those cars is over a thousand dirhams. <laughs> you see. This you is, know, and then a, a, a rim is is four or five thousand dirhams easy. Five thousand dirhams for a rim? Yeah, yeah, for a top end Mercedes yeah. wheel rim. If you if you bend the rim, can you fix it, or is it done for? No, you can't. You can you can fix it. It's never going to really be fixed. You know, it's never going to be. It's a top end Mercedes. Who's you know? Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. I was looking at this. I'm thinking this has got to be five hundred thousand dirhams. Yeah. And there, it 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 wasn't a G wagon. I mean, a G wagon, you could have done it. You know, you might have had rim issue, but but this was this was one of those low cars. I got to say, I got a little smile on my face when a person did that. Just thinking, because <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, you shouldn't be driving that fast. It's residential. Yeah. You know, yeah, some calm, little kid jumps out, calm. you know. Yeah. So I thought the same thing. And they did kind of do the U turn and they were going back. So I wondered if they were going back to see what it was they hit. Going back, <laughs> going back to pick everything up. <laughs> well, and, and I did slow down because I, hey, I'm already going slow. So I did slow down to see if they'd left any debris. They hadn't. I mean, the amount of cars that we get in that have got yellow paint all underneath them because they've oh. gone over speed them too quick or they've, you know, yeah. they've hit something. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, it's, yeah. it's just, it does untold damage. And the, and the problem is, you know, as you go, you get, there's a certain, width, like, depending on the type of hump it is and the, ty- the kind of speed you're in, there's a bit of a window in the speed range there. You can go over it where you think, yeah. but at that speed at 75, it's, it doesn't make a noise and it's quite smooth. Yeah, yeah. Suspension's working overtime, and it's going to mm. wear it and break it, and and it does it quicker than you can imagine. I mean, it can li- you can literally be just one one kilometer per hour and over a speed hump too fast from a full suspension repair, and it's that's really is true. You know, yeah. that's so true. I mean, people that we get in, our customers that we get in that live in, um, say they live in a high rise, so yeah. they're in an apartment building. Oh, yeah. There's lots of little speed humps in those so things. So they've got, um, you know, they've maybe got a couple of speed humps to get into the building, down into the parking underneath, and then that's it. But the people you get in areas such as, let's say, Springs or, or um, Arabian Ranches or Ooh, places like yeah, that. Even worse. That are just literally 20, 30 speed humps in and out every day. Yeah. Done for. Done you for. Can tell. The, the, the suspension is, is yeah. shot. You have to go so slow over them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Which is good for you. Yeah, it's good for me. It's great for business, not good for, good business, for them. But like, like I say at the start, you know, everybody's problem becomes my problem, and then yeah. you know, and and it's not, it's not 
because no one will also, I mean, like the, like the guy with the oil. Yeah, it's your problem, but everyone wants to have this problem fixed for the, the least amount possible because no one wants to be spending a whole yeah. bunch of chunk of change on that, but that can get really, start to get really expensive. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you take a, take a, a Mercedes is a great example, right? An S class Mercedes, the front suspension on that, if it's um, electronically adjustable, adaptable suspension, you, you can be 20,000 dirham. Yeah. It's crazy. It was crazy numbers. I mean, I, it's like, I, I've never bought a car. My first, that's been my first, more du- than that. my first Duhatsu Syrian only cost fifteen thousand. Yeah, brand new. Yeah, drove yeah. it off the lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, I mean, that's <laughs> that's yeah. Here we go. So yeah, just uh, just just <laughs> pay. T- I mean, those yellow and white stripes they put on speed ups kind of help, right? Yeah. Pay attention. Yeah. Keep your eyes on <laughs> yeah. them. They're yeah. there for a reason. Yeah. They yeah. want you to slow down for a reason. Yeah. So Our yeah. invoices are yellow and white. So there we go. You'll remember those. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, I think we're going to wrap up for yet yeah. another episode of Potaholics, the car clinic. You know, you realize this is show number 18 of, of, of this series. I'm, I'm really excited. That's a, that's a lot of shows. We're getting there. Yeah. yeah. We're really getting there. And, and of course, if you want to get in touch with us, we're going to let you know how to do that in just a second. Follow us across the podcast channels yep. and share, share the link with folks. Let them, let them know that we're doing this. Comes to you right here in Dubai. We're at the Rove Hotel downtown. Yep. And uh, we'll be back again real soon. Glenn, thank you very much. Thank you. You've been listening to the Car Clinic, a Potaholics podcast recorded at the Rove Hotel in downtown Dubai. You want to get in touch with us, drop us a line, potaholics with a K at gmail.com or hit us up across the socials, potaholics with a K. Share this podcast. We'll talk to you again really soon. So long for now. <laughs>